Hey there, welcome to lesson 2.2, uh, explaining malaria and sickle cell disease. We're talking about the evolution tool today, specifically the answer review. If you have not completed the evolution tool, pause the video so you can go back and take care of that. Uh, if, however, you're using this as a tool to kind of help you get unstuck from certain situations or certain questions, then by all means, keep on keeping on. To use the video, work at your own pace. It's really important that you take care of your own mental health and well-being and that of your family during this process. Uh, so pause and rewind as often as necessary. Uh, it's important to stop and verify your work against the explanations. How did you do? Ask for clarifications in places where it may not match up and you're not sure why. Uh, reach out to your teacher, talk to peers, maybe even talk to somebody in your household about it but really make sure that you're seeking out clarification for that. And then finally, explain your thinking. Once you've kind of wrapped it all up, uh, explain the process that's going on, and this will really help you reiterate your learning uh, as you go through. The goals are similar to that of uh, the initial lesson 2.2 with the added factor of comparing your own work against the explanations. Again, your job is to identify factors or selective forces that affect survival in an environment. You are going to identify the variations of hemoglobin genotypes and phenotypes and their frequencies based on those eco uh, ecological factors. And then you're going to identify and explain the interactions between the genotypes and ecology over time. The tools that you're going to need for this are going to be the completed evolution tool uh, sheet or notes that you've made, and then something to make notes with. Uh, a different colored pen or pencil uh, something that is a little bit different than what you originally wrote with is most helpful. If you don't have that, totally fine. Uh, just make sure that your notes uh, are, are loud and clear on that paper so you can see the difference between um, what you had originally put down. So let's start off with the top. In this situation, malaria is present in the environment. So we have variations uh, of genotype and phenotype. The three variations are AA, AS, and SS. The person with AA is the normal healthy hemoglobin. AS is that heterozygous genotype where they have sickle cell, they're a sickle cell carrier or they have sickle cell trait. And then finally we have the homozygous recessive which is sickle cell disease, the SS. Individuals with the homozygous dominant genotype AA don't get sickle cell disease but they are however susceptible to malaria. Those with the heterozygous genotype AS, they don't generally have sickle cell disease symptoms. Uh, as we've learned before, that, that could be subjected to low oxygen environments. However, in this particular case, we're saying that they do not have sickle cell disease symptoms. They're also resistant to malaria. Finally, we have homozygous recessive genotype, the SS individuals. They do have sickle cell disease and may not survive to reproduce. When we look at our gene pool frequencies, which is that final column on the right-hand side of the sheet, you can see down here that we have time one, which was pre-filled in for you with 50% A and 50% S. When we get to time two, which is generation one, uh, we see that it's uh, A has increased to 70%, S has decreased to 30 percent. By time three, A has increased up to 81 percent, S has decreased to 19 percent. Now if you're trying to remember where we got these numbers from, uh, recall back to lesson 2.1 where we had those data tables that showed that uh, allele frequency, that's where these numbers came from. When we're looking at the environment where malaria is not present, uh, we can see that we have the same variations, right? We have uh, normal healthy hemoglobin, sickle cell carriers, and sickle cell disease. However, when you look at the interactions between variation and ecology, you'll notice that there are no mentions of malaria because, again, it's not present. So individuals with AA genotypes do not get sickle cell disease. Individuals with AS genotypes don't have symptoms, but they are carriers. And then finally, we have individuals with SS genotypes who do have sickle cell disease and may not survive to reproduce. With our gene pool, our allele frequency, again, down here at the bottom, our parent uh, generation here, time one is 
for time two, you can see that the A allele has increased to 68%, but the S allele has decreased to 32%. By the next generation, time three, you can see that the A has decreased down to 61% from before, uh, and the S allele has increased back up to 39%. So getting into our explanation, there are three genotypes in both types of environments with and without malaria. You're going to have the AA genotype, which is going to be the genotype for normal healthy hemoglobin. You have the AS genotype, which is going to be for uh, sickle cell trait or the carrier of sickle cell disease. And then finally, you have the SS genotype which is going to be a person who has sickle cell disease. So for the ecology, malaria and sickle cell disease limit the ability of individuals to survive and reproduce. Malaria is a parasitic disease that is fatal, and sickle cell disease is a blood disease that is also fatal at times. In regions with malaria, individuals who have the AS um, genotype have an advantage due to the resistance of malaria. That resistance comes from that S allele. The reason why is because the parasite needs to be able to rearrange the material inside the blood cell, uh, and the S allele, that particular gene, makes it uh, impossible for that parasite to be able to do that. So the parasite then is unable to be able to make its home, so to speak. So that is what provides that advantage of the uh, AS uh, genotype. In areas without malaria, however, both AA and AS individuals survive and outcompete individuals with the SS genotype. Explanations and interactions. So when we combine those two, both the variation and the ecology, we can see that in areas with malaria, there's going to be a higher frequency of S alleles in the population since the AS genotype offers a survival advantage. So if you have sickle cell trait, you have a better likelihood of surviving malaria. In the areas without malaria, however, there's no benefit to the S allele, and those with the genotype SS will suffer from sickle cell disease. So for this reason, there's going to be a lower frequency of the S allele in the population. And you can see that represented over here in this graphic from uh, Arizona State University. You can see that we have uh, AA here, where there's, there's the healthy red blood cells, um, AS and SS, and the risk of malarial infection when it's high and low. Okay. Finally, the checking understanding. Uh, you've compared your work against the explanations. You've identified factors or selective forces that affect survival in the environment. You've identified variations of hemoglobin genotypes and their phenotypes as well as their frequencies based on ecological factors. You've identified and explained the interactions between the genotypes and ecology over time. Your next step at this point, if you haven't already done it, complete that row on your learning tracking tool. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, thank you so much for your time and have a brilliant day today. Thank you.